Hi, I'm Jeff. Thanks for checking out the channel. In this video here, I'm talking about M&R's Ford Bronco Raptor Dual Function Fog Light Kit. It's uh, essentially the same light kit that I had previously done a video on for my 2022 Bronco Wild Track. I was fortunate enough to be able to trade that vehicle and get a new uh, Bronco Raptor here, 2023 model. Uh, the difference with the, uh, the Bronco Raptor is it actually comes with a set of uh, fog lights already installed. The outboard set of lights are tied to the car's uh, fog light button that's in the rotary dial of the headlight selector. You just push that button and as long as you have your low beams on, this uh, fog light will come on. The other one is treated as an off-road light in that you, uh, you can't turn it on without using the AUX1 switch in the overhead panel. Turns out they're the same lights, uh, same intensity, and I personally find them uh, pretty dim and it's certainly not great for off-roading. They're fine if you want to use them for actual fog lights. And I don't really know why they just didn't put them on the same switch because they're, they're the identical light. Uh, they seem to even be, be aimed the same. I checked them out uh, on a wall and uh, I can't really see any difference in aiming. Supposedly though, the inboard set that come with a, uh, a blank out plate over the top of them that you can remove for a cap. Uh, those there that are tied to the AUX1 are aimed maybe slightly higher, so they're not appropriate for driving on road. But when I turn them on off for on road, I, I can't really see any difference in their alignment. They, they perfectly overlap each other when you rotate between the two lights. Anyway, I like the M&R uh, lights better. They are for off-road use only, but they're uh, far brighter as you saw in my prior video. And after I install these here, I'll go ahead and do an update, a comparison between how these work and how the uh, ones from M&R go in the same spot. So the main part of this video is gonna be more about how to remove this assembly in here. Uh, and then the installation of the M&R uh, fog lights that go in this pocket here are gonna be the same as my previous video, but I'll, I'll make them, uh, I'll update this video so it shows the process as well. But the wiring is gonna be the same thing. So this video is, the main difference is how to get this uh, assembly off of the uh, vehicle so you can put out the, uh, the M&R lights. Again, uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate you tuning in. Hi, I'm Jeff, and I want to thank you for uh, checking out the channel here. Today I am talking about how I installed the M&R Modular Bumper Fog Light Kit on my 2022 Bronco Wild Track. So if you check out the kit here, you can see that the bracket that mounts the lights is uh, really nicely uh, designed to fill the void in that corner of the modular bumper. So it's a, uh, trust me, a really heavy piece of steel here. Uh, there's no flex or bending in this thing. It's powder coated. And once you install the four pod lights that come with the kit on each side for eight lights total on the two brackets, once you install it, you can see it really is gonna do a great job of filling up that hole or slot in the modular bumper. And to me, that gives it a much more of a factory look than being able to see through the bumper, see wires in the background. Talk about what comes in all the packaging with uh, all the boxes removed here. You end up with your two brackets or metal shrouds, they call them here in the kit for each side of the vehicle. Then you're gonna have eight total of the 20 watt lights, four per side of the vehicle to go with the brackets. Each one of these puts out 2,000 lumens or a total of 8,000 lumens per side, 16,000 lumens for the entire vehicle, which again is really bright and also again, not approved for uh, running on road. In addition to that, each side is gonna have eight total screws and washers to bolt these pods into the fixture here. So the kit comes with that. Then you get two grounds to take all of the uh, wires out of here, which are the blue wires, and ground them locally somewhere convenient for you to the vehicle. And then the other two wires here are gonna be uh, positive. That's the brown and the yellow are the supply lines for the vehicle. The yellow one being for the amber daytime running lights or backlight, whatever you wanna call it. And then the brown ones are going to be for the white lights. Finally, you get the overall harness. So the harness will tie into each side and this harness will cross over behind your bumper and get into the other side of the lighting and then ultimately it goes up for power supply. You've got two kind of wires here. You've got a black one and a red one. The red one is going to take all of the white lights, which again are coming out of the brown 
on the individual light pods. And then the black one is going to take the amber or daytime running lights, which are all of the yellow lights out of the light kits. So once those are all tied in, you'll be able to ultimately tie these into two aux switches on your vehicle. The white ones, which are coming out of the red cable here, have to be at least a 10 watt capable. You can put the amber ones onto anything you want. Again, that's what's included in the entire kit. Per the instructions, I would certainly agree, you're gonna to wanna to definitely install the light pods onto the bracket before trying to put this into the vehicle. I'm gonna uh, start putting these in and see how they do on alignment here. The first one looks like it's all right. I remember that there's a bend in this, so I expect the angle of the light will be a little different than the angle of the bumper. So we'll see how they align once I get them installed here. And here is what a fully assembled bracket with the four pods in it looks like. So I got them all pretty well aligned, you can see. They take a little bit of effort manipulating with your fingers. If you have big hands, getting these screws in and threaded is not easy. And you definitely want to make sure you torque them down pretty tightly. And it will uh, bend the tabs a little bit and get them to uh, align flushly with the light pods here. You can apply a lot of torque to the lights to get them to line up so you can see the faces of them are all pretty parallel to each other now. When I first put them in, they were a little out of whack of each other, but you can apply some pressure, maybe, you know, 20, 30 pounds of force and actually get the little tabs to bend to align the lights pretty well. Once I get them on the vehicle, I'll be able to see how well they're lined up, but you can see they look pretty close to being parallel to each other now. And I'll do a little tweaking once I get them on the vehicle to get the final alignment. Here's both of the uh, bracket assemblies complete with the uh, pod lights installed. Again, before putting them on the vehicle, just trying to get them generally aligned in the same plane across the faces of the light, which is not parallel to the direction of the bumper. But just time kind of make it so you have a little less tweaking to do once you get them mounted on the vehicle. Once you have the kits assembled for each side, the light's all installed. Then we're gonna go ahead and connect the wires for each of the three colors here. So remember the blue wire is gonna be for the ground. So we'll tie the four blues into each other and then those are gonna tie into a grounding wire that's gonna be grounded on somewhere locally near the light assembly. Then the yellow all get tied together. That's gonna be for the amber lights. Once all those are connected and installed in the bumper, then the amber lights are gonna be tied into the black cable. And the black cable will go to its own independent aux switch. You have, uh, you have a uh, Bronco with the aux switches in your overhead. And finally, the brown lights are for the white off-road lights. Those are all gonna be hooked together. Those will end up going into the red cable and the red cable will go into its own independent aux switch as well. So you'll be able to control the amber backlights, which will get powered off of whatever you connect the black wire into on your aux switches. And the primary white lights will all be tied into the red cable and its own independent aux switch. And after using a little flame or a heat gun to uh, shrink wrap this down, I just put some electrical tape on it too. Uh, and now this unit is ready to uh, install the bumper. The first thing I can see about this removal is it's gonna be hard to get the camera into places while I'm actually working on it, but there's 
a trim piece here. There's uh, plastic uh, pop outs to get, but importantly, one is in between the space of the steel bumper here. You can see how close the spacing is here to get in, and I can feel with my finger. There's a, a fastener right back in here, with very little wiggle room to uh, get into. So it's going to be hard to actually do that and film it at the same time. But uh, there's going to be a little bit of uh, doing this by feel and showing the pieces after I move it on how you get it out. kit like this off Amazon can be very helpful. So with two of the uh, plastic push pins out, you can see we're able to start to see some access. So there's another one still the one I mentioned that's going to be hard to get to here. I'll see if I can film it. Probably not because it's right behind the steel bumper and there's about an inch or two of space in here. So it's going to be hard to hold the camera and manipulate a tool in there. I think actually uh, dropping the skid plate here, which isn't too hard. I've done it on my uh, last install. Uh, just four bolts up underneath here will give a little bit of angle access. I think if I can go that way, I can get at the, uh, the plastic rivet that is uh, up in behind here but it's really hard to get hand uh, up into the space that's in between the steel bumper that's behind this that i showed in the uh, earlier clip here so i think maybe dropping this will make it a little easier to access especially since i have to do it again on the uh, passenger side and when you remove the skid plate there's two back bolts here that you don't have to fully remove so I recommend backing them out like about a halfway and uh, they can uh, basically hold the plate in after you remove the two bolts. You can see it's kind of free floating here and they'll be able to lift up and slide it forward off of the uh, slots basically that wrap around the uh, aft bolts. And then once you have the plate off, you can get it out of way and that's gonna give a little better access here. I'll show a better shot here. With the skid plate out of the way, it's still a really tight fit. So you can see the steel bumper here. And this is the panel I'm trying to remove. And right here is the one bolt plastic uh, pin that's holding it in. So a little better access, at least I can get my hand in here a little bit, but I can't really film it and take it out at the same time. I think I found the, uh, the best tool to do this with. It actually came up pretty easily once I found the right piece to get in this small space. Again, the back of my finger is against the seal bumper and there's this recessed kind of a U-shaped area where this rivet was or plastic pin was. And the tool I ended up finding out uh, was a straight, just a straight plastic piece because it is able to be put flat in the depth of that U. I heard not to block my camera, but you can see the shape of it here goes inside there really easily. I was able to get it under and pop it out with really just a, about 15 seconds of effort. So that would be my recommendation for getting that one piece out. It would be a simple flat tool like this, removing the skid plate and coming in from the, the side, the inboard side of the bumper and sticking this up into that U-shaped slot that's right there. You can see the width of this fits in that groove perfectly and you can pop out the plastic pin. And finally, that's three of the uh, plastic pins out and there's one more even higher up, also equally hard to reach up here and also kind of in a recessed spot. So I'm gonna try that flat plastic uh, piece again here to uh, pop the uh, fourth of the four total that hold this plastic cover piece in. So this one was the third one I took out, and then the fourth one I'm working on is right here. Alt 
ultimately I found a, a flat set of pliers. It was the easiest to uh, get a good grip on it. I had trouble using needle nose, but definitely not convenient to get into that spot up there. It's uh, pretty tight. Hold on. But this is the assembly once you uh, take off that protective cover. Next, you can remove this piece, which will be a little bit easier. This will be reinstalled uh, after uh, you install the, uh, the lights again with the, uh, there's an adapter plate that m and gives you, so this can bolt onto the back of their set. This one will just come out with these screws here, Torx. Even the uh, final third bolt for removing this panel in the front is pretty tight to get to because the head of my wrench is maybe a quarter inch away from the steel bumper you can see here above my finger. So it's pretty tight in there to get this out, but it does fit with a small socket. And this is the main plug that takes the vehicle supply to this, which supplies both the fog lights here and here. So just getting this disconnected so you can pull the assembly out and you'll leave this for now. I'm just going to tuck it up out of the way. But this is the power supply tied into the fog lights as well as the aux one for the inner lights here. We'll just move it up out of the way. So now that the light assembly is disconnected from the vehicle. So after you get the uh, disconnects taken care of here, I would recommend using Ford's little Allen wrench set, or it's not an Allen wrench, but uh, their little Torx wrench uh, that's included because you can see how little space there is between this wrench and again, that bumper. It's just uh, really tight for doing all this work here, but it, the wrench has enough room in there to fit in and you can go ahead and use it. And this is in the included Ford toolkit that you have here. There's so little headroom in here I found, once I got it backed out enough, it's actually a lot easier to just go ahead and use some kind of pliers, grab the head and back this bolt out because the clearance between this bumper is very limiting on uh, getting the, especially the further the screw comes out, you get less and less headroom between the uh, angle of the wrench and the bumper. So it's just very frustrating. This is probably one of the harder disassemblies I've done on the uh, Ford vehicle here. So for removing this whole assembly here, pretty challenging in here again, really tight space. Uh, you've got to remove this screw, this screw, The screw right here. And then the last one, another challenge I want to get to is right way up in here in the top. So again, I won't really be able to hold the camera and see what I'm doing and remove that screw, but gonna have to be careful. I notice these screws are not hard to start to strip. So you gotta really make sure you're into them uh, very firmly and tightly while trying to back them out. And they're pretty long, so it's kind of frustrating to get these things out. To get this fourth one out, again, you can see the uh, the final screw I talked about. I've got a uh, Torx socket in it, and then a small extension bar here. And I'm actually using the Ford um, wrench that came in the kit. That's also the Ford extension bar. So I'm just using a, a small Torx set head I've got in there and then just making sure you really give good, strong pressure into the Torx head. Otherwise, if you start slipping out, you strip it, you're gonna really have a nightmare trying to get that thing out of there because there's not an easy way to get pliers in around it either. This is assembly coming out. Again, this last screw, the good news, as long as you can back out the screw about of a third of the way, um, you can jiggle this thing up, lift it out, and rotate it out of the assembly in here. You can actually see I still have that screw. I haven't got it all the way out yet. I'll go ahead and remove it. Uh, not that it's actually necessary. It could sit in there now, and it wouldn't impact uh, the install, which uses three th these three screws for the M&R assembly. But that last screw up here is very awkward to get to. 
again, really tough space to work in. Not easy, but it is doable. This is assembly again, pulled out. Tyro is uh, also, by the way, I didn't mention, is uh, rotated out just to give some room to get inside the vehicle in behind the bumper. So I definitely recommend turning your tire. Um, if you're working on the driver's side, turning the tire full left and it gives you room to get your head in there and work. Then here is the uh, open slot now in the uh, modular bumper. So this is the uh, empty uh, spot after you get everything disconnected. The only thing here is the original power. Uh, I've considered tying that. I can tell that there's uh, two negative lines in here. Uh, two are black and then uh, two different colored ones. One would be for the floodlight power to the outboard light. And then the other one would be the aux one. And I can see it's uh, actually brown in there. Probably matches up with the aux one power up inside uh, by the uh, firewall. But it would probably be just as easy to tie my negatives into a bolt uh, somewhere down in here as to splice into this supply here. So to probably keep that factor original, I'm gonna tape this off and just tuck it up somewhere. That way if I sold the vehicle or anything, someone would always have the option to go back into the uh, the factory uh, power supply here for a fog light in the Ox one. So I've just taped up the original power harness here, power supply, and I'll just tuck it up out of the way so it's not gonna be a problem. and it will uh, sit in behind the uh, fog light assembly. The passenger side uh, comes out the same, so I'm not gonna get into all the steps again. It's just uh, a repeat. I will say that having done it once, I probably got the uh, passenger side out in one third the time, just uh, knowing which tools to grab and pull everything out. So same thing, pulled it out, taped up the uh, the car's uh, harness and just tucked it away. And I'll uh, run uh, the M&R supplied uh, wiring harness to uh, power this thing instead of trying to tap into the uh, factory wiring harness that was already behind there. Now with the vehicle, we're going to remove the three T40 fasteners out of here and reinstall them in the three slots or holes on your assembly. Again, we've already come out here and got wiring the ground done. It's wired and just given some extra tape to uh, make sure it's nice and watertight. And then we have the yellow and the brown connected. Again, the yellow is going to be for the amber backlights and the white is going to be for the white off-road lights. And I'll just go ahead and assemble this from behind into the uh, bracket here. Now one tip I have, I have to go ahead and uh, make your assembly here. You've got everything wired. I've already uh, heat shrunk my uh, negative ground in. It would be to go ahead and test these lights out before you go ahead and mount them in. So just a quick, easy way to do that. Let's go ahead and uh, unlock the positive ground on your, I'm sorry, the positive cover on your battery terminal. And then you can have the lights here. And then touch the other one. And I can see all the lights are working. And it was just something to do in case you somehow had a faulty light or any other problem before you go and get this all mounted in and wired into your vehicle. And the first time you test it is by powering up your uh, switch on your aux. Uh, I like to just go ahead and make sure the electronics are working so I know everything is wired up right and all of my negative uh, wires are properly uh, connected in together. Because if they weren't, one of the lights might not work on that. Then I'd have to figure out if it was because of the negative ground or because of one of the power supplies that the light was bad. But anyway, just a, one little thing you could do to maybe save yourself a step of having to uninstall this if you had a problem with one of your lights. And using a T40 Torx, uh, we'll go ahead and remove these bolts now.
Second roof is uh, just loosely installed now, kind of in the learn as you go mode. I'm gonna go ahead and put some masking tape here just to kind of protect the, uh, the bumper here. You saw me put a uh, cloth towel over it. I just wanna make sure I don't somehow scratch up the uh, bumper with the tool here. Now that installed, we're uh, in your good and solid. Uh, the one long cable, of course, is the grounding wire that will uh, tie in somewhere here inside the uh, engine compartment. And then we've got the other wires still underneath here, ready to be tied in for the yellow, which are the amber lights are gonna go into the included wiring uh, harness. And that's gonna be on the uh, black. And then the uh, brown wires here, which run the white fog lights are gonna go onto the red cable on that two wire uh, harness. So installing the wire harness here, I've already uh, dropped it down through the engine compartment. So interestingly, the uh, wire harness is two pieces connected in the middle. So either side is uh, equal length. So you can drop whichever end of it you want down in through the engine compartment to get down to your lights behind the bumper. So here you can see I've got one set ready to be wired. And then where I found a nice spot to drop it here, if you step back so you can see into the compartment. Right down outside the radiator, it's just a good area. It was really easy, just kind of thread it down in here, pretty much in line with uh, where the uh, hood support is. And you can take it all the way down underneath there. dropped out right here. Here's the wiring set up for the driver's side. And then the harness continues. I just ran it down through the gap under here, let it rest up over the top of the bottom skid plate. It won't be able to go down any further because of how the skid plate is bolted onto the vehicle. So the wire is just gonna be resting across the bottom of this, but it was really easy to tuck it up through this seam. And this is where the other end of it comes down by the wires for the passenger side. For the uh, ground, I'm going to take uh, Mike's advice over at m &R, where he did a great video install on this too, which has been a great reference for me as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and ground this out to uh, this bolt right here up in the front of the plate on both sides here. So back it out, stick this in. I'm gonna put a little piece of black uh, tape even around the blue just to make sure I can't see anything and uh, this should work out nicely. Now that we have the uh, ground negative uh, taken care of and tucked up underneath, the last thing we had to do for connecting at the lights are the yellow cable. Remember, uh, yellow is for the amber. The yellow is gonna connect into the black wire harness, and the brown is for our uh, off-road white lights, and those are gonna connect into the red. So we'll get that taken care of here. And here's the passenger side connections. Again, the black is connected to the amber lighting, which is the yellow, and the red harness cable is connected to the brown wiring, which is for the white off-road lights. So now that the wiring is complete down at the uh, lights and the bumper, we're back up to where I ran the cable up, again, for reference pretty close to where the support for the hood is. If you look down there, you can see where I ran it in, a nice gap 
by the radiator. You'll find your own spot down there. And I tucked the wire in along the trim here, basically wrapped it around another one of the wires that was underneath. And that leaves us with our wire up here in the engine compartment by the firewall. And this is where all the auxiliary wires are. You have that, and you can see down there, they're all uh, hanging blank and ready to be connected. Finally, I did a little uh, few zip ties to clean things up. So again, this is the cable coming up from uh, down below. And as it comes up, I tie it up to another cable here, zip tied, and it just runs along the inside. I tested them once, of course, before I actually installed them, like I said, hooking them to the battery, but now just to make sure I didn't knock anything loose or everything. So I've got, I went ahead and used uh, aux number six just to kind of keep it out of my way to keep the daytime running light feature, the amber lights always on. And then I've got number two as my floodlights. So just for the amber lights, we'll go out and take a look. And I definitely like these a lot more. And I'll back the vehicle up, but I love how they match. This looks great. On the factory fog light, when you have it off the uh, vehicle, you're gonna see there's two metal clips, one down here and one down here. So here and here. And just go ahead and remove, remove these uh, clips so you can use them to attach the little uh, splash guard onto the piece supplied by m &R. So you can see I've already got one of them on the clip here. And then we'll just take the next clip, put it there. You can see the MR piece lines up with it. And then just screw that back on with the factory bolts that you had. And then that will give you the mounting piece to go up behind the lights. You'll do that on both of these metal plates that you get from M&R with the Bronco Raptor a version of the pocket fog lights. So this is the trim panel. I've just got it loosely hanging right now. I'll spin around so you can see how it goes in. So you can see the uh, bolts that I use to attach it to the uh, m &R piece of plate. And now I've got the three other screws that hold it in place. They're just loosely attached in here. So I'll tighten it down and that will cinch this in. The remaining holes up in the uh, plate will be for the push pins uh, that hold in the plastic back panel that covers all the stuff up. And of these three that we install here, one, two, three. This one here is again, really challenging as you can see clearance on the wrench in the back of this uh, bumper are really tight. So you're just gonna have to take your time and get it in there and you get to like make a quarter turn progress on each time. I decided not to put that fine final, uh, the third screw in because the steel plate and how it attaches to the bumper from behind, I couldn't see any difference in how solid it was. I mean, this thing is just not moving because it's a steel plate with two bolts about that far apart. And then this is the uh, trim piece that goes over. So, you know, just pushing in the two pins, you know, the old ones don't have anything to hook onto anymore because the, the rigid light assembly isn't back there, but you'll hook on one here, and one back and around the corner here. Once you get those in, this back piece is really pretty solid and it really trims it up and also makes it so you don't see through the light assembly. It gives a uh, black behind it. But that's, uh, that's everything wrapped up.
OEM headlights. OEM headlights bright. Fog lights off. Fog lights on. Fog lights off. The inner lights from the uh, rigid on Ox One on the Braptor. Off, on. Just the rigid lights. Fog lights only, no headlights. Fog lights only. Headlights with fog lights. All lights, headlights, and both sets of uh, rigid lights. So this is high beams, low beams, low beams with M and R. M and R off. Headlights off. The M and R fogs only. Headlights on, high beams on. Just really dramatic difference. You saw with the other, uh, just the uh, floodlights on, M and R off.